Hello dear viewer, today I have some Criterion Collection 4K and Blu-ray titles to talk about. Some of these are double dips, so films that I already have on the format that I'm looking to compare with the newer Criterion versions. So without further ado, let's get into it. The first one I want to talk about is Mean Streets, and I only talked about this a few days ago on the channel because I reviewed the Second Sight Films 4K edition from the UK. So the question becomes, which version here is better? Which is the one that you should be getting? And is there actually much difference between the two? The 4K digital restoration used on the Mean Streets disc is overseen by Martin Scorsese and Thelma Schoonmaker. It is the exact same restoration used on the Second Sight 4K release. Now that doesn't mean it looks exactly the same, but I would say for 99.9% .9 of viewers, it basically does look the same. In case you somehow haven't heard of the film, this is one of Martin Scorsese's early works, one of the first that catapulted him into fame. He made it a few years before Taxi Driver with Robert De Niro here and Harvey Keitel. It's a story about these two young guys in New York who are involved in a life of crime, but they are seeking, you know, purpose in life, some direction. One of them played by Robert De Niro is more of a kind of hot-headed, unreliable, all over the place guy. Whereas Harvey Keitel is, you know, he's trying to keep things together, get somewhere. And it's the clash between these two characters and the situations they find themselves in, which make this such a great film. So back to the disc and why it's not exactly the same as the Second Sight disc here. Well, the reason is purely down to how the disc is mastered and encoded. Criterion and Second Sight use different people or companies to encode these discs and author them. So the Second Sight one is done by Fidelity in Motion, who are basically the best in the business, so reliable. Whereas the Criterion disc is done by a company called Nexspec, who I'm not too familiar with, but there is a difference between how the encoding has been done here. Like I said, for the majority of people, you will not notice a difference if you were to compare these two. It's only if you're looking for it or if you have a keen eye and you've been looking at discs like this for many years that things will start to stick out. It's mainly just in terms of compression and digital artifacts appearing on the screen, like macro blocking, which is where in the compression process, in areas of the image where a lot of the color looks exactly the same shade, they will kind of be blocked together to carry less data on the disc. That's not a very technical way of explaining it, but that's the only real way that I see differences between the two versions presented here. So then the only other real place to look for comparison is in the special features and the overall package. If you've not seen my review of the Second Sight disc, then do go and check that out. On the Criterion disc, there is a 2011 conversation between Scorsese and Richard Linklater talking about Mean Streets and how Scorsese relates to the film so many years afterwards. Also unique to this disc is a video essay from Imogen Sarah Smith talking about the film's physicality and its portrayal of brotherhood. And then there's an older interview with the director of photography, Kent Wakeford, which is not on the Second Sight disc. Things that are the same are the selected scene audio commentary with Scorsese and Amy Robinson. The documentary Mardik Baghdad to Hollywood is on here. And there's the featurette from 1973, Martin Scorsese back on the block. So which of these is the better version? Well if we're talking technically I think the second sight one is very very slightly better in terms of the presentation of the film. If we're talking about special features there's a lot of great features on both discs, some carry over as well, but if you get the limited edition version of the second sight one you of course get the huge book inside as well which I think is fantastic. However, if this limited edition version is still available, it is more expensive than the Criterion disc, especially if you ever get this on a sale. So the Criterion 4K edition is a great disc. It's not perfect, but I wouldn't call the Second Sight version perfect either. And I forgot to say, I do really like this new artwork on the Criterion edition. Before I move on to the next title, I should say that if you're in the UK and you want to get some of these Criterion imports, the place where I get them from is a website called Boutique Home Video. I've talked about them many times on the channel before. They import these discs to the UK and then they sell them from the UK. 
So if you buy them from the website, you know that you're going to get them within a few days in great condition. You don't have to worry about international packaging or any hidden customs fees. They have hundreds of criterions and other labels on their website. So do go and check it out. And if you spend hundred pounds, they have an offer on where you get 10% off. Moving on now, we have Don't Look Now, the Nicholas Rogue Horror Classic, which had a Criterion Blu-ray many years ago. It fell out of print. And for some time, that Criterion Blu-ray was going for a lot of money on the secondary market. And then last year it got this 4K upgrade. I think Don't Look Now on the 4K looks great. Nicholas Rogue, such a visual director, he started out in cinematography. So he knew how to make a good image. And a good image indeed, this film is full of them. The 4K digital restoration looks great. As always, there are questions about the authenticity of the color grading in the 4K restoration. This happens all the time now. We see it with basically every release. People questioning, is this how the film should look? Is it not? And for someone like me who never saw this originally projected, I never had this on DVD and I never had the older Criterion Blu-ray. You know, I don't really know how it should look, but the way it does look on the new 4K digital restoration, it fits the feel of the film, so I'm happy with it. But of course, you know, your opinion may be different. As with all of the Criterion upgrades to 4K, it carries over all of the special features from the older Blu-ray. So if you have that old Blu-ray and you want to get this one, then you're not going to get anything new in terms of special features. The version that I'm comparing this to is actually this one that came out four years ago. This is the Studio Canal 4K release from the UK, which I'm pretty sure is using the exact same 4K restoration approved by the cinematographer. So the two images largely look exactly the same. Again, difference in encoding. So you might pick up on differences here and there. Again, only if you're going to be looking for them though. I would say neither of these have anything disastrous in the presentation. As with Mean Streets, there are some differences in special features, but also some overlap. For example, on the Criterion disc, you don't get the audio commentary with Nicholas Rogue. You do get the interview with the composer, Pino Donaggio, and you get some differences in terms of the interviews that are provided on each disc. So again, comparing these two, it's hard to say which one you should go for. I'd say they're both great discs with differing special features, but either way, it's a fantastic film on 4K, one of the greatest horror films of all time, if you ask me, and it looks very good indeed. Moving on from talking about Nicholas Rogue, let's talk about Nicholas Rogue. I've got his film Walkabout here. This is the 4K upgrade from the old Criterion disc, which I also happen to have here. Lo and behold, they look exactly the same. And you really can't even tell the difference unless you look at the very small text on the back. Supplemental features are exactly the same as always. So if you're upgrading, you're only going to get the new presentation of the film. So how does the new presentation look on the 4K disc? Well, for the most part, it looks very good. There's a lot of detail. I think the colors look good. They do look different to how I remembered the film on another version, which I'm going to talk about very shortly. The main issue that kind of rears its ugly head in terms of this disc is again with the compression. And Criterion have a long history of having some kind of poor compression on their discs in the past. Uh, this one, you can see it quite clearly in certain sequences. Because of how the disc is encoded, you can see in some portions of the image, whenever it is a very bright white, like in the cloudy skies when they're in the Australian outback, or at the start of the film in the opening montage, if you look at any of the very bright portions of the screen, you can see macro blocking, where how the film was compressed is bunching up the pixels and giving it this ugly digital look. Lots of people won't notice this. Perhaps you've watched this and you didn't notice any of that, um, but it does stick out. You can see it, especially in motion. And as well, if you do pause the disc and just go from frame to frame, you can see exactly what I mean. I know that's not how you would watch the film, but it shows that the issues are there. And I would say if a better job was done in the authoring of the disc, those issues could be avoided. For me, it's not completely enough to spoil the experience. It's only in certain shots and in certain parts of the image. But if you're particularly susceptible to noticing that kind of thing, then I would imagine you would notice it too. In terms of the colors of the image and how I said I remember them looking a bit differently, I'm talking about the older Second Sight Blu-ray from about three or four years ago. 
This is not a 4K UHD, but it is from a 4K scan and restoration that Second Sight took part in. And the two 4K presentations do look different. The colors are different between them, particularly when you look at some of the, the main colors like blue, green, and red in the image. They do look different. Uh, I don't have side-by-side -side comparison screenshots available, unfortunately, but just something to be aware of that the two versions do look different. Now, because Second Sight released this walkabout disc and they are continuing to do great 4K editions like the Mean Streets one I mentioned earlier, it's very likely that eventually they will do a 4K version of Walkabout. I don't know when, and it'll be interesting to see how that compares to the Criterion. So I'd say unless you're desperate to get this and watch it on 4K now, it could perhaps be worth waiting for the eventual upgrade that we get over here but then I might be completely wrong and that might never come. Moving on to another 4K disc, I've got The Trial from Awesome Wells, the brilliant Kafka adaptation starring Anthony Perkins, brilliant black and white cinematography and set design. I absolutely love this film. This is a brand new 4K digital restoration that has been licensed to Criterion from Studio Canal and I do happen to have the Studio Canal 4K disc here. And to no one's surprise, the presentation looks pretty much exactly the same. Again, the only differences in picture between these two discs would be in how the discs are encoded. I didn't notice too many issues in that regard. So I'd say no matter which version of these you get, you should be happy with how the film looks. When it comes to special features, it may be worth double dipping here because the features are completely different between these two versions. On the new Criterion disc, there is an audio commentary with Joseph McBride, the film historian. There's a 1981 documentary about the making of the trial. And there are some archival interviews with Orson Welles, Jean Moreau, and Edmund Richard. Meanwhile, on the Studio Canal disc, you get they feature This Is Awesome Wells, you get Wells Architect of Light, and there's an interview with actor Stephen Burkhoff. So completely different features between these editions. So I'd say either one of these you get, you should be happy with. And for fans of the film who love the film, you might want to get both of them. And then let's talk about a Blu-ray disc of La Ceremonie, the film from Claude Chabrol, the brilliant 1995 film starring Sandrine Bonner and Isabelle Huppert. We follow this meek housemaid who works for this bourgeois family who don't treat her that nicely. She becomes friends with Isabelle Huppert's character, this postal worker who starts to convince her that she should kind of lash out at them and get her revenge. The film very quickly spirals from there and it's one that you could compare to films like Bong Joon-ho's Parasite or Joseph Losey's The Servant. In the special features on this disc, Bong Joon-ho actually talks about how much he loves Claude Chabrol's work and in particular this film. The 4K digital restoration looks beautiful on this disc. I kind of wish there was a 4K UHD but I guess it isn't the kind of title that would you know, sell huge units, but it is one of my favorite films from the 1990s. There's a making of feature, some interviews with the people involved in the film, and there's a criterion feature about the use of sound in the film, which is fascinating. I used to own a UK Blu-ray of this from Artificial Eye, which went out of print long time ago. So I'm finally glad that it's, it's available again, although you have to import it because it isn't available in the UK. But I would say if you're up for a great film that has this great social commentary, then this is one that you should definitely check out. So those were just some of the Criterion discs I've added to my collection lately, doing some comparisons between existing 4K editions and the new Criterions. If you want more Criterion collection recommendations from me, just click the video that's presented on screen right now. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you soon.